here on the morning prime it is the 15th of august 2023 on a tuesday at least it's not numbingly cold as always so at least today you might not be all layered up to make sure that you keep warm but nonetheless make sure you just keep out your eyes to see what uh, or keep your eyes peeled to see what will be turning out on how the weather will be today my name is dibala and i trust as always if you slept well and you're ready for this good day every tuesday we have siesta fiesta coming your way where we slice and dice the political scenario of the day and uh, we're doggedly following the big event that is happening in Eldoret and today is the official opening day the president will be officially opening tomorrow and uh, we've been uh, of course telling you he's opening on Monday today other dailies are reading today other dailies are also are reading tomorrow but I suspect tomorrow will be the day now when he will be officially opening the devolution conference 10 years down the line we hack back into history of this country for the first time where we have devolved government how has it fared on the hits and misses still the governors are decrying the late coming of the fans that is adversely affecting their pressures in the counties and this is what they want to be highlighted in this particular conference even as it's happening in western Gishu county we have a scandal of the scholarship that has embroiled the county especially with the previous uh, governorship and uh, they are threatening to actually be protesting today to make sure that this issue is addressed by the president this is what the parents want that a lot of friends over 800 million shillings close to a billion shillings cannot be really accounted for and that is affecting the children or the students who are supposed to be flying out for father studies and that is just telling you how this country we've lost our conscience as far as corruption is concerned how can we lance this boil of corruption that is perpetrated every facet of our society from the leadership to the lowest totem pole that we have of every person of every stripe in kenya is involved in corruption but i'm not speaking broadly that every kenyan is corrupt they are good people in this country but the majority of us we are corrupt and this goes to show also on what we'll be reading from the headlines this morning regarding the job scandals a lot of civil servants in this country are holding fake papers we shall be discussing this as well with our panelists today and the government is mulling over to bring back the fuel subsidy remember may 14th the government scrapped the fuel subsidy they said this is not sustainable and uh, we need now to just remove it so that we can try and be living our financial truth well that particular decision has come to bite them and now that fuel subsidy will be brought back which brings the question what some of the advisors actually are putting uh, some decisions on the table as far as fuel subsidy is concerned and other issues as well we remember also in nigeria when we had a new president coming in he scrapped the fuel subsidy and he had to call a state of emergency because of the food crisis in nigeria all that was pegged because or was pegged on the fuel subsidy a lot of issues that we have to discuss this morning but also before we do that you know what we do well we get to see what is fresh off the the daily today what is on the front page of the bold paper the daily nation the star we have also people daily as well as other dailies but today is all about moment of truth on the front page of the standard the bold paper devolution moment of truth right can we speak about our devolution truth how has it been and as i walk out down then i shall just give you all the details of this as well and also i have owen by already in studio up in ali going through the papers so that at least we can contribute and share what we're learning this morning all right good to see you good to see you to the, to the studio yes, all right this is what is on the front page of the standard today devolution moment of truth there is a report card National and county's leadership converge in Eldoret to take stock of 10 years of devolved governments. The country has seen successes, failures, opportunities, and big lessons. It has also improved infrastructure, healthcare, but with a fair share of white elephants projects. This story continues on page 2, 3, 4, and 5 of the standard today. State of counties. We have the heat here, good progress, efforts recorded on county level infrastructure, circulation of money, resources at the growths, at the grassroots. We have participation of people in governance and development. Also considerable progress in managing devolved health function. 
Here are the misses. Low revenue collection, missed targets and stalled projects were disbursements of funds from national government, widespread corruption and mismanagement of funds, disproportionate share of functions against devolved resources. That is some of just the highlights that you have here as far as the fair of it or the state of the counties is concerned. And you can see the picture of the Council of Governors uh, chair there, Anwai Goro, addressing or just uh, they're using that particular picture to illustrate the state of the counties there. Let me see what we have on top here on the teaser. Bomber's team agrees to anchor talks in law. Bomber's team agrees to anchor talks in law. And MPS attacks on banks in cash battle. They've raised that particular threshold that there was there of 300 shillings, 300,000 shillings for you to be transacting on MPS per day to 500,000. And this is a story that you want to read by Brand Googie. Inside the standard there, business segments, our MPS is taking on banks in cash battle. Where the brick and mortar, as it were, or the banking system also is getting a huge hit as far as competition is concerned. Also remember we have the, the model exam papers on the newspaper in education. This is a segment that is all about matters academia in the standard for our little ones who are in school so that they can get apprised with how also the papers or the feel and flavor of how the papers can be uh, of course framed for the exams and also to revise. Make sure you grab a copy of the standard you have a model exam papers inside there. Stars Eye Wild Titles that is on sports pages of the standard today 34 and 35. On the side by Wildcoin may have collected data for a year. This is what they call the court is learning. Data Protection Commissioner Immaculate Kasait has moved to court seeking to bar Wildcoin from either transferring or processing data collected from Kenyans. The story is tucked to on page 6 of the standard this morning. There's a problem question there. Will new funding model save varsities? New plan means for the first time universities will get funding for all the full amount they charge for a program unlike before when government failed to remit money. And this story continues on page 10 of the standard today. You have the financial standard coming in handy for you. Financial standard, state bets on new geothermal fields for cheap power. That is a story that you want to follow also inside the financial standard today. Get all the wiser as far as money matters is concerned. This is a standard for you, the bold paper. The Daily Nation is up next. Jobs scandal is a splash. Global lenders have pushed for layoffs. Two tribes get nearly 60% of KRA slots. We have the public wage bill crossed the 1 trillion shillings mark last June, eating into nearly half of the national revenue. And the crisis will worsen due to bad hiring habits and open thefts. You have this story on page 6 and 7 of the Daily Nation 1. Audit reports reveal how state agencies routinely violate the law by employing more staff than required, adding to the wage bill burden. Also, secondly, looting of public funds through salaries for ghost workers is reaching crisis levels. As at least anti-corruption commission reports shows, also we have MPs are furious that Kenya Revenue Authority had 788 out of 1,406 revenue service assistance from only two communities. Also, we have the fourth reason. Counties without set staff ceilings are on a hiring spree, which has seen devolved units spending up to 50% of their revenue on salaries. One of the governors, it's reportedly said that he had almost 600 uh, some of his operatives uh, who were escorting him to funerals and weddings. They were just hired for that purpose, for the purpose of optics. This was just nearly close to the general election. And this goes to show how this money is spent. So these are big job scandals here. We can read the rest of the story inside the Daily Nation here on page 6 and 7. Also, state explores fuel subsidy to check rising palm prices. Government is exploring a cheaper fuel consignment to reduce the runaway retail prices. But as, of, as to compensate oil dealers still selling the expensive stocks. You can follow the story on page 8 of the Daily Nation. Machogu, 26,000 teachers are waiting transfers to their home counties. 
26,000 teachers are waiting transfers to their home counties. This is what the CS Education is saying. And also MPs to pass motion on Ruto Ryla crisis talks technical team to frame agenda as dialogue set to resume on Monday. This is on page four of the Daily Nation this morning. On the side but there, Darugo Quarry corns prey on investors' prospective homeowners are falling victim uh, to fraudsters posing as officials of mines in Juja selling building stones. And you have that story on page 12 of the Daily Nation. Also, heroes abroad abused at home. Is a story that you want to follow there inside the Daily Nation as well. Let's see what we have on the front page of the star. Exposed fake papers rampant in civil service. In 2021, qualification agency announced that 250,000 public servants had forged academic certificates. This story is on page four and five of the star this morning. And talks team failed to agree on agenda yet again. And we can see here white political Kalonzo Musyoka, National Assembly Majority Leader Kimani Shungwa, and Embu Governor Cecily Mbarire arriving for the Azimio Kenya Kwanzaa talks at Bombers of Kenya in Nairobi yesterday. We will give you the details of that much, much later in the course of the program. But there is a bumper harvest happening. President William Ruto inspecting a maize at his farm in Kwelel, Wasingishu County yesterday. Bumper harvest is in the whole thing. And it says record harvest expected following fertilizer subsidy. Kenya is expected to harvest more bags of maize with six counties of Wasingishu, Transoya, Goma, Kakamega, Nandi and Vega expected to produce more than 17 million bags. Agriculture CS, Mithika Linturi, has attributed the bumper harvest to subsidize fertilizer. You have this story on page 8 of the star. Why Azimio leaders may remain without security? Kindiki is non committal on this. He's just remained very minimal. And it says Azimio chiefs and lawmakers could stay longer without their security detail after Interior CS Kithura Kindiki remained non committal on when the bodyguards will be reinstated. The Senate has sought answers on the motive of the withdrawal and when the bodyguards will resume. However, Kindiki has not indicated when the officers will resume duty. You have the story tucked on page 6 of the Star this morning. Shaka Hola suspects can't account for wives, even children. At least 21 suspects out of 27 held together with controversial preacher Paul McKenzie have failed to account for the whereabouts of their wives and children, even as detectives claim they could be part of the over 400 bodies exhumed from the forest. This story continues on page 23 of the star today and the evolution event happening today timely release of fern stops governor's wish list in conference the story continues on page 10 of the star today let's see what we have on the front page of the people daily MPs hold keys to bomber stocks that is a splash and we can see Ryla in talks with azimio governors ahead of key conference azimio one kenya leader Rilo dinga can be seen here when he held a consultative meeting with members of the Council of Governors from the coalition at the Jaramogi Oginga Foundation offices in Nairobi yesterday. The meeting came a day to the Devolution Conference, which kicks off in Eldoret today. And by the way, also he'll be addressing the conference on Thursday. Also, team agrees on ground rules. Parliament asked to pass law that will entrench Obasanjo team and shield it from court action. The story continues on page four of the People Daily this morning. Looking on top, men eating tenders meant for women. Men, quote unquote, eating tenders meant for women. This is what the CS Transport is saying. And you can follow the story inside the, the People Daily today. You remember the, the Agpo procurement uh, provision that uh, gives women that particular leeway and also the youth on tenders now men are encroaching on this you can follow the story inside the people daily this morning kiazi moto that is a splash today on the front page of taifa leo kuna mvutano kati ya pande hizi mbili zinazo shikilia msimamo mikali kuhusu maswala maku gharama ya maisha kufungulio kwa sava Kagua matokeo ya kura ya urais wa mwaka wa wa polisi. You can follow the story inside Taifa Leo this morning. On the side, Baraila, Akemewa na waasi wa ODM. Maisha namba, maisha namba ya aja 
badala ya huduma maisha namba yaja badala ya huduma all right that is the latest development there maisha namba yaja baada ya huduma namba that is on page 2 of taifa leo and also governor amulikwa kuhusu ajali ya londiani you can read, read all about that on page 4 and how the fans were embezzled name up here ayoyomea warabuni all right you can read all about that particular transfer that is happening name now to play in the middle east that is taifa leo for you today let's buckle down to some business where new taxes push cars beyond the reach of more kenyans new taxes push cars beyond the reach of more kenyans actual car taxes jump 14.69 percent on average taxes outpaced the 10 percent input duty and you have illustration here of what is currently happening comparative duties before and after increment of 10 percent import duty and you have the vx engine capacity 4600 cc now it is going for 14 million shillings and uh, current and previous of course it was going uh, there's a different there difference of 0.3 percent toyota prado uh we have 0.1 percent difference now we have toyota harrier we have uh, that standing at 0.1 percent going down this is the current state of play as far as the reported car is concerned if then you're thinking about this that is bound to bound to be quite expensive for you might want to dig deeper for you to get that luxurious car safaricom triples daily m-pesa limits to 500,000 shillings that is the latest development there and you can read the story by dominic omondi that continues on page two of the business daily this morning let's just zoom in and, and see what we have on the sidebar on the ticker there, UK farm I sell of Kenyan tea estate in sexual abuse scandal. The Luxembourg-based private equity firm is exploring the sale of a Kenyan tea plantation. It bought from Unilever last year amid workers' unrest and sexual harassment claims. That is on page two of the Business Daily. Ruto reinstate fuel subsidies in U-turn. The government yesterday reinstated fuel subsidies in a major U-turn as it moved to cushion consumers from skyrocketing bump prices, pump I should say, prices following the arrival of a cheaper consignment last week and keep off Kenya's eyes, court orders, Wildcoin as probe underway. That is the latest ruling from the court as far as Wildcoin is concerned and the harvesting of data. That is a business daily. We cross over now to Uganda where Biarugaba is asking court to save his job. That is his NSSF job. You can read the rest of the details there inside the Daily Monitor if you're waking up on that side of the border. And also we have new rules set for online money lending as well. And also you have the Rainbow Brothers painting their way to stardom. It's all about the young people. You can read all that tucked away inside the Daily Monitor if you're waking up in Uganda. Also 186,000 companies struck off register and amongst that is amongst homecoming show of power all well that is the question and you can see the palatial home there all that happening in uganda in tanzania lawyers are claiming charges changed in slas arrest in a sudden turn of event dr wilbrod slab boniface mabukuzi and mpaluka nyagali mdude who are yet, were separately arrested at the weekend could face treason charges their lawyers claim you have the story on page two if you're waking up in tanzania that will be a story of interest that you want to follow also real estate occupancy on upward trend 50 percent is the eye popping figure that has risen now you can read all about that inside the citizen if you're waking up there in tanzania let's cross over to rwanda where we have rwanda sports city 10 things about zaria court the court's design and visions a cornerstone of Africa's sporting landscape. You have the story on page four of the New Times. And Kagame can be seen here. Uh, Masai launch Zaria Court Kigali project, President Kagame, and Masai Ujiri, Toronto Raptors president and vice president and vice chair, and giant and giants of Africa co-founder. During the official groundbreaking ceremony of the Zaria Court Kigali on Monday, Expected to be completed in early 2025, the court features an 80-room boutique, hotel, restaurant, a rooftop lounge, a gym, wellness spaces, 
co-working spaces and a podcast studio. Upon its completion, Rwanda will be home to the first Zaria court on the continent. Here the story on page 5 of the New Times. This Africa this week, future of East Africa mission in the Congo in doubt. Kinshasa continues to sign bilateral defense deals as a plan B in the run-up to September expiry of regional forces mandate. The story continues on page 8 and 9 of the East African. And also we can see an incident there of East African regional force soldiers at the Rumagambo camp near Goma in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. And this also comes at a time when you have the United Nations General Secretary announcing that the final phase of pulling out the troops in Congo is due. So this is the latest development there. East-South ties. And we can see President William Ruto here is being received by his Mozambique host Felipe Nyusi in Maputo as he started a two-day uh, state visit. We can read all about that in the East African. Why East Africa has more months to of food shortage? New reports shows cross-border trading in maize has dropped from 48% to 31% in 2023. The story continues on page 4 of the East Africa. Number 70, allies plot law reforms. Legislators and the electoral body have come up with a roadmap to cement the Ugandan leaders' 2026 race. You have this story tucked away on page 10 of East African this week. This is our looks. You can grab a copy, get all the wires as far as the regional politics is concerned. And looking at the editorial cartoons, this is what we have in the standard today. The U.S. is not involved at all in the ongoing talks. It is a domestic issue. And this is coming from the Foreign Affairs Office. And of course, you know who he, this is as well. This is what GAMS has captured for us, where we have governments speaking from both sides of the mouth as far as announcements and policies are concerned. Lately, this is what has dogged the current administration. And this is what GAMS has captured today. All right. He is here, Senator Coons. Quick, we have to find an alternative term for handshake. And you can see there, he's being instructed by Biden, so to speak. Otherwise, who actually is on the other side of the phone. And coming on the table, everyone is looking aside, uh, backs against each other. We can see the president holding court with the vice president, with the deputy president there, I should say. And Rilo Dinga on the other side is alone. Currently, we know what is happening with the bipartisan talks. They're seeking to actually predicate it on uh, a legislative framework so that we, have don't, we don't have any threats of court interventions. Headliners in bipartisan talks as well. My direction, Azimio, Kenya, Kwanzaa, they're tied there. As you can see, I shall be showing you some of uh, the latest as well as far as museum is concerned. But allow me to introduce our guests again. They're here. Up and down, I'd introduce the Deputy Majority uh, Leader of the National Assembly, Owen Bayer, joined by Senior Councilor Congo Mogani, who is the Senator of Nyamira, also a key co player in the Azimio talks. And also, we have Senator Dan Mazo, who is the Senator of Makwini. Good morning, gentlemen. Good, Good morning. morning. <coughs> All right, today is uh, Owen Bayer against two. <laughs> the other time it has been always done Mazo against two or four, in fact even three. Yeah. And Okongo Morgan is sometimes against also three as well. Right? But I want to thank you so much for showing up in the morning. A lot that we have to discuss today. And uh, I just want to welcome you. Uh, Kongo Morgan, I haven't seen him in a while. He's, he's taken a, a sabbatical leave uh, from the show. <laughs> Good yeah. to have you back. Yes, morning. And you're coming with a lot of import also on the table. <laughs> yeah, on the bipartisan talks. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Morning, Dubai. I mean, I've been away for, for a while. It's good to take a break, re energize, and uh, also watch. You know, I've been watching the show from home, mm -hmm. uh, seeing uh, the contribution from other leaders, which mm -hmm. has always been very valuable. Uh, refuel a bit, uh, but uh, glad, really. Um, it's always an honor. And, uh, a privilege, mm -hmm. you know, for KTN to invite us as leaders mm -hmm. to be hosted by by this show. And uh, while I was away, actually, many people were calling me and saying, we are not seeing you on the show. What is happening? We used to see you from uh, NTV, AM Live, mm -hmm. KTN News, where are you? And I told them, no, 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 I'm just taking a small break. Mm -hmm. I'll be back soon. So it's, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. 
uh, to be back on air on, on KTN uh, to join my colleagues on the show and commend them. I've been watching the show and they have been doing great, uh, you know, contributing on real issues mm -hmm. that affect Kenyans. And, and for you, it's good to know that uh, these shows are a very huge fan base. Mm -hmm. You know, there are many people who, who watch the show. So I, I think uh, KTN is also doing a great contribution mm -hmm. in uh, informing uh, the, the nation what's happening and giving a platform to our leaders. From the two political divides to come here and uh, have a discourse on issues that are of, of, you know, of interest to the people uh, that uh, we, we represent. Mm. So I'm, I'm really happy to be back. I think we should yeah. close the show now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's good news. <laughs> good, of course, comment from you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Dan Mazo, also, also for the senator, I was a bit uh, having some fears and trepidation, even for the deputy majority leader, if uh, you will be ashore yeah. today. Yeah, because of a devolution conference, but I understand most of you also are heading there after, um, after the show. Dan Mazu. Yes, uh, well, unfortunately, I'm not going there immediately. I'm mm. going to Makweni. Oh, you Remember to to there is a young man who was shot dead in the Mali during the demonstrations, and uh, he's being laid to rest today. Okay. Yeah, the police had claimed that we had hired bodies. So... <laughs> We are, we are burying a real person today. <laughs> and, and we want to go and condole with this family. It has been having challenges. This was a young man who had just qualified mm. to go to university to study. Uh, he was expected to have reported in September, but unfortunately he was caught up in the chaos, having been sent uh, by his mother to the market. He never actually left his house. He was shot there while his mother watched. and. Uh, while his mother uh, yes, and mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, it's been very, very difficult for that particular family. The, there was dispute as to where he could be buried, so the leadership of McQueney okay. uh, got together and uh, got a piece of land somewhere, and uh, we are lay, suddenly laying a young man to rest today. It should never have happened. Uh, I still insist that uh, for if every single death in all mm -hmm. these processes, we, we, we need to have an inquest. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, done by a magistrate, so that uh, everybody can speak the evidence they know about who did what. Uh, we, we even doing his postmortem was such a big challenge. For the first time in life, in 20, my 20 years of practice, uh, yeah. uh, we were told the family has to get permission uh, from the DCI. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, when you are conducting. Uh, you, you know, post-mortem, there is a form, there is a, doc, a medical doctor, you know, from the government. There is a, this time, a poor came, yeah. and uh, it has been unnecessary for the government to take such a family and, mm. and such a mother through such a difficult time mm. when uh, they have a son who has been slain, uh, you know, to death. Mm. So the, the, the perpetrators of these killings, each one of them must be brought to book by the law, because mm. the law is very clear. If there is evidence against you, there is no need for the police... Uh, inspector, uh, inspector General uh, to, to, to protect you or to shield you while you are really a criminal mm. in the police force. I believe there are very many good police officers. There are many people whose judgment is clear. But unfortunately, in these killings, uh, there, were, there were people who were determined. Uh, there were police officers who had a political mind mm. and were determined to crush what was perceived to be a political um, opponent. And, mm. I, and I think politics should not be brought into police uh, professionalism. Police is independent mm. and should uh, judge everybody, you know, fairly, and no one is allowed by the law to mm. execute another. Mm -hmm. That is, cannot happen at all. And uh, we are going to be following up to make sure there is inquest on this, on all the deaths which took place in McQueen. There was mm. another young man also innocently shot by a prison warder. Uh, so, so, so we, it's, a, it's a high time. The, the prison warder within the prisons of the prison? Or no, why? no, no. The, the prison warders had come into town to, to help. To help with the You with know, with the, the peaceful uh, demonstrations. Uh, and I can assure a police uh, uh, IG that uh, <coughs> and if you don't disrupt Kenyans, Kenyans are very peaceful. Mm. If you don't bother them, they will not bother you, they will not steal anybody's thing. They will not use a stone, they will not harm themselves. Um, article uh, that 7 is very clear. Uh, peaceful demonstrations can happen in this country if they are not interrupted. And mm. it is very, very uh, unfortunate that uh, people have to lose their lives on such a thing. I, I think it's a high time 
um, from the statements we have had uh, him issue, he looked at the issue. I think he's been misled in a big way. Yeah. And the people who have misled a person in authority have committed an offense. And they should all be charged in the court of law for giving the Inspector General uh, misleading information. Mm -hmm. These deaths are real. There are no hired bodies. And they are very sad and very unfortunate uh, to the country. So the Inspector General was misled? He was misled. And that's, uh, whoever misled him committed a criminal offence. He should be the first one All right. to instruct him to be charged. So what is happening with the person also of uh, the ICC on still the same same case? We've had uh, Karim Khan, who is the prosecutor, recusing himself from anything that is involving Kenyan cases at the ICC. You see, have he represented Kenyans um, when he was a lawyer? And now having uh, become the prosecutor of ICC, there is conflict of interest. He cannot handle any of the Kenyan cases. So in the event, and because I'm sure we have met the threshold uh, for international crimes against humanity, uh, he, he, another, a, pros, a different prosecutor has to be found to deal with the Kenyan cases. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are going to pursue these cases because you, you can see there is no goodwill at all in right. Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the judiciary, unfortunately, has been frustrated, cajoled, intimidated, and, uh, and you know, their personal security you can hear those threatened. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> their personal security threatened. So, and then Parliament, uh, the, the National Assembly and Senate have become a rubber stamp of the executive. So we have only one ruler, two rulers in Kenya, the president and the deputy. Everybody else, including Owen Bayer, is quietened and can only sing the song of Houston. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear from Zine Council, uh, uh, Congo Mogini. When it comes to the threshold of actually submitting these cases to the ICC, people were saying, I think maybe you were really punching above your weight in terms of uh, numbers, or maybe you had a different scenario in terms of collection of data, we don't know. No, no. Um, first of all, uh, you know, we as uh, politicians can do the politics, uh, which is all right, but you cannot have a situation where our police service, uh, it's, it's no longer a police force, yeah. where our police service wants to join in the politics. We cannot have a situation where you have uniformed politicians yeah. in, in uh, police officers where you issue statements that are extremely insensitive uh, to families that have unfortunately lost their loved ones. That, I think, uh, no leader uh, worth his soul should uh, condone such a behavior. Yeah. You know, if you read, uh, I guess it's Article 244 of the Constitution, you know, it says that uh, the National Police Service shall strive for the highest standards of professionalism and the discipline yeah. among its officers. And they must comply with constitutional standards of human rights and fundamental freedoms. Yes. So if uh, there is a demonstration and uh, there is anybody who breaks the law, what the police should do is to arrest and arraign that suspect in a court of law. Mm -hmm. But when you have a, a police, the head of the police service, in a democratic country like Kenya, telling uh, you know Kenyans that uh, the, the guns I, I use <laughs> is not, uh, I don't know, there's a word he used. I think he said that we, they don't cut them for fashion. They cut them with life bullets, which can be used against citizens. That is not right. And uh, if, you, if you have followed cases that have been in ICC, there are heads of police uh, forces mm -hmm. that have been taken to ICC. If you convert the police uh, as a unit to butcher and kill unarmed citizens, then you are a candidate for ICC. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how it comes in, because there is, there is no way you can have a situation where a country that has a constitution, has laws, mm -hmm. has a judiciary, does not take action against the head of the, the, the police service if they are involved like we have seen, uh, ca clear cases where they are shooting to kill innocent yeah. citizens. Remember the debate we had uh, before we took our case to ICC, is that we, as a country, we had failed to invoke our own laws and take action mm -hmm. against the culprit. So the threshold should be, if there are crimes that have been committed by the police, have we as a country investigated those crimes and taken action? If we have, 
then you cannot invoke ICC <coughs> as a jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. But if we as a country fail to invoke the law, investigate and prosecute the culprits or the suspects, then we become a candidate for the ICC. Mm -hmm. And remember, Dibal, that uh, even the UN as a, a unit, you know, we have a, a, rapporteur, a UN rapporteur on torture. Mm -hmm. They have, uh, in the past, during the repressive years uh, of, of the current regime, mm -hmm. they, have, they came here many times and uh, issued uh, reports in indicating uh, whether Kenya was respecting uh, non-international standards of human rights, whether the Kenyan police were torturing suspects whom they were arresting. So we can actually begin with uh, inviting the UN rapporteur on torture mm -hmm. and other inhuman degrading treatment by the police. Once he makes a case, then, and we can prove that as a country we have not taken any action, mm -hmm. then the only place to run to is, is ICC, because you cannot have a situation of, of impunity. Mm -hmm. the even in the U.S., the police officers who are involved in the murder of uh, George Floyd, mm -hmm. they are behind bars. They are not working free. They are behind bars. So we must have a situation where we take action that deters future, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, conduct by the police that uh, is geared towards killing mm -hmm. and armed citizens. Mm -hmm. We don't support. You have had Honorable Manzo here, as quoted Article 37. Mm -hmm. We don't support thuggerism in the form of a demonstration. But again, the Constitution, even the Political Parties Act, if you read Article, I mean, not Article, Section 15 mm -hmm. of the Political Parties Act, mm -hmm. it says that a political party has a right to demonstrate and the police should provide security for any political party that wants to engage in a demonstration. Mm -hmm. So this is a constitutional right and uh, we as a country want our people to enjoy rights that are, we know we call them fundamental, mm -hmm. fundamental human rights in the constitution, including the right to peacefully come out and demonstrate. I read the, I was watching news, I think mm -hmm. your channel, mm -hmm. KTN, yes. and, and I saw some families in uh, Eldoret, yes. uh, I think uh, whose, whose children have been, I think, I don't know that the right word to use is con, <laughs> or <laughs> families that have lost money. It's conmanship. <laughs> I don't know it's yeah, you know, and, and I saw them uh, giving a news uh, address yesterday, yesterday evening, and they said, we will not interfere with the devolution conference, but we are going to have a demonstration to register our grievances against uh, those, those involved in the government of uh, Wazing issue. Now, I don't expect the police to use... To go and shoot them. To go and shoot them. <laughs> because, you see, these, these are grieved uh, families. They are saying they have made all manner of uh, complaints to the relevant authorities. Yes, no action yes. has been taken. Mm -hmm. So today, they want to come out and uh, demonstrate. Do you expect the police, the head of uh, the police service in mm -hmm. Kenya, mm -hmm. to send armed policemen and shoot those innocent Kenyans? No. I will, uh, I will be the first one to condemn, even if you want to say that is an order zone. Those are Kenyans. Thank you. Those are Kenyans and uh, they, they have a right, All right to invoke Article 37. So the, the short of it is um, the IG should okay. respect our constitution, should respect the principles of human rights in this constitution and should exercise a lot of restraint before he uses live uh, bullets mm -hmm. on unarmed Kenyans. All right. Yeah. Talking of rights, uh, let me just give a right to Owen also yes. to respond to the adjectives that were actually laid down there. Cajoling, I think uh, you just missed a pacifier. <laughs> you know, uh, these guys are two today, but I'll handle them more. Uh, they're both liars. But, um, but I want to say this, the, the ball, um, you can use your right uh, and fundamental rights, and I respect fundamental rights, and I would like any government in power to respect fundamental rights. But the use of fundamental rights or, um, or the misuse of fundamental rights is what we, we, we frown upon. And one of the things I, I would like to tell my brothers here, as opposition, they have a right to, f to fight to bring down a government because they are government in waiting. Mm. But they do not have any moral right to want to bring down a country, this country. And those are fundamental different things. To bring down a government, that is what uh, we have uh, as opposition, their job.
who want to be in power to bring down government motions to but criticize he, government but even you, uh, before you go down there yes you admit now there is actually a stitch of evidence or a scrap of proof yes that these bodies were not hired they, I'll, I'll come the, to that. The, the senator is actually going for a funeral today. I, I'll, come, I'll, come to, I'll come to that. But I want to tell them, the two senators, their lawyers, please do not ever be seen to uh, fight to want to bring down a country. Mm -hmm. You know, this country is for all of us. And whether we differ politically or not, Kenya must be Kenya throughout, must have its international reputation, must be respected, and as a country as a country that is a go governed by the rule of law and constitutionalism, it must stand tall among uh, the families, family of nations. And that is one of the things that uh, the Azimio people miss. They fight so hard to bring down this country. They fight so hard to ensure that uh, the name Kenya, when mentioned anywhere, uh, smacks of uh, blood and things like that. We must all of us be patriots at the end of the day, uh, such that uh, Kenya as a nation, Kenya as a country, and Kenya as a state remains. You might have a problem with William Ruto, and you might have a problem with uh, Kenya Kwanzaa. It is okay for you to do that, because that is your role now. It is the role you asked for, and Kenya gave you that role. Please use your role, but please do not in any way infringe on the nationhood of this country. The second thing that uh, I would like to tell uh, my brothers, and I... I I always hear my friend um, uh, Dan, and uh, now uh, uh, Senior Counsel, talking about ICC threshold. Really, has this country reached that level? ICC, how do you wish, in your normal sense, wish that this country goes to ICC, that Kenya has a case at ICC? The, the, the vagaries of it is when you have a, a case at ICC as a country, in the uh, eyes of the world what country are you? you're a failed state you are a state that is on the downhill we are not there as kenya kenya is still a very stable country but uh, you know they wish their country to be ad to to be admitted at the icc even when they know what they are talking here is is something that they should be talking in you know when you're having a drink and you're laughing and you're a little bit high and you start talking about you know we need to take you know it can be allowed at that level but at a national level when you sit down there and say, yeah, this country must go to ICC, what is it that this country cannot handle mm -hmm. as, it is, as it were? It's a constitutional, democratic, what is it that it cannot handle such that it must go to ICC? They're good lawyers. The courts, actually, the judiciary has shown its teeth, has shown its independence. But today, these two gentlemen will come here and lecture us about how the judiciary has failed in this country. But they have been winning cases mm -hmm. at, the, at the judiciary. And they keep on going to court, and when they go to court, they get uh, justice. But they're telling you that today here that uh, the judiciary in Kenya has failed such that whatever it is that uh, must be done, must be done at ICC. Have they taken a case to uh, the Supreme Court or to whatever court right now and they have been dismissed? They have not. They have not attempted to, even Parliament, they have not gone to, to, to the Senate to try to bring a motion on the things that have happened so that there's a discussion and a resolution of parliament to remove the IG. They have powers to remove the IG as senators. Mm -hmm. We have power as National Assembly to remove the IG. We have institutions that can remove the IG if they have a problem, a proper problem with him. But because, you know, it's nice to talk ill about the, you know, and to take the country to ICC and all that. The problem we have with Azimir it's because they have failed in their political quest, they think that every institution has failed. All right. You know, and yeah. uh, wait a minute, <coughs> yeah. you know, you give them uh, <laughs> time. Because they have failed in political quest for the, as many years, they think now because they cannot, the, then the judiciary has failed, police has failed, everything has failed. Today, they're even accusing ICC. You, you know, that, uh, you know, we need, even we have no faith in ICC. So that uh, uh, Karim has to, to, to he has already recused himself. But they want to hang around that idea of uh, Karim uh, uh, and say, now they'd have no, the, 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 the interesting thing but, about but it. But do you think also the, the decision is German? That uh, Karim can be Karim seen holy Karim is a court. gentleman, yes. and Karim uh, said, okay, I handled Kenyan cases and all that, and I have recused my, myself. But before he <coughs> did that, they had started. Now, these guys have no, 
uh, uh, they say parliament uh, is executive and therefore is a rubber stamp. The judiciary here in Kenya is a problem. Now they are saying ICC also has a problem. Next time they will be telling us to form another court so that the gentlemen be realistic. All right. Be realistic to the things that uh, are, are facing you. You cannot win an election the way you are. William Ruto beat you hands down. They even have a problem with the uh, IBC, you know. Well, we'll discuss and, that because I think that is <laughs> so, part of the bipartisan talks. And if I you just... allow me, the balance to say uh, this thing of, uh, yes, Kenyans died during the protests. And that is not uh, uh, rocket science to know. Yeah, but but and I, said the, the bodies are hired. Nobody died. Or say that there might be an exaggeration on the part of Azmi of how many people actually died, just to make government look bad. But we admit, and even the president spoke about it, and he said, we will not entertain if we fought to, to, to finish uh, extrajudicial killings. We cannot replace it with police brutality or death by the gun from the police. We will not entertain that. And that is a, a firm statement coming from the head of state. And I also want to tell police, we respect them, we like them, we love them because they are law enforcement, but they should not use the power of the gun to, to, to kill. Thank you. Uh, to but kill innocents. Components. Or, uh, but I do <coughs> not agree with them on the issue of saying that policemen have become politicians. No, no. All right, let's see that we, 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 we'll, we'll plumb deeper into that. The IG has... Uh, we'll no, plumb no, deeper the into IG that. The IG is a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> so. the, All right. The, the only thing, the only statement I would have expected to hear from Honorable, I mean, he's a good yes. friend of mine, a leader yes. and I respect. Yes. Is, uh, you know, to condemn the statement that was issued by the IG. Yes. You know, Moshimia, when we sit here, we also have uh, families. Yes. I'm sure you have a wife yes. and children. Yes. And uh, I don't know how you'd feel if a misfortune struck your family yes. and a police, the head of the police service, issues a statement yes. saying that uh, the allegation you are making about the death of your loved one yes. is a scheme you have urged by hiring people from the morgue. I mean, as leaders, really, Dibal, there are statements that uh, we should, in the very least, condemn. Yes. Mm -hmm. In the very least, condemn. There is... Uh, what you can say and get away with as yes. the head of police service. Yes. But I don't think you can get away with such a reckless statement. I mean, you, you have families with death certificates showing that their loved ones were actually shot by the police. And then you make that casual, careless statement. I at least expected you, Moshimiwa, yes. to condemn the IG on that aspect. And uh, we, 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 I don't think we have ever indicated that we want to bring down a government. What we condemn are excesses, government excesses. You know, like killing unarmed demonstrators, you know, refusing to do an investigation where particular police officers have killed innocent children. I mean, you have, you have, you have had the case of McQueen. I mean, it, it moves me as, as a Kenyan to feel that there is a mother somewhere who had a child, they, were, they had a lot of expectation on this child, but that child has been killed by a police officer. Surely as leaders, there are things that should not go uncondemned. The ball, you know? if you allow me. <laughs> right, could we take a, a short break? <laughs> we we'll take a short break right now. But before we do that, uh, we will come back uh, to that, because I know you, when we want to start, just to set the tone, for our conversation as well. We want to take a short break. When we circle back, of course, we shall be interrogating uh, this issue of bipartisan talks. We have, uh, uh, of course, the team that has been constituted right now the yesterday. But despite the fact that uh, we, the meeting is on, still the headlines which are being drawn on the, on the sand, we shall give you just the full details of that. And remember also today is a big day, the devolution conference, of course,